Hello. You ready to do uh, we're back game? again. No, I can do one a month. It's like, bring your calendar, let's talk about it. I've been looking for an artist in residence, and I like what you do. But shit, 14 years, I have people, and now I have a theater? I go walking out so excited. He tells me that he was didn't even see all of my performance because he was working his real job. His real job is not the coffee shop, not the theater. He facilitates events. If something happens on one of the stages of his clients, he put it there. He doesn't have email. He lives above the theater with his 11-year-old son. He had a son later in life. He says that his other event was in Miami, and he was making sure everything was okay, so he stepped out of my show. His event in Miami was um, Gloria Stefan and the Miami Sound Machine, Mark Anthony, and the Black Eyed Peas. Everything that was on stage was on stage because Chris hired the workers and the trucks to deliver it and set it up. He books all their hotel, he handles all their payrolls and all the breaking down. And this is what he does all around. I'm like, this guy's for real. And he says, you know, it's all a matter of scale. Because Miami, I had 50 union guys and 10 trucks. Here you got me and Theo. <laughs> I'll take it. I'll take it. But I don't hear from Chris for the next few weeks. And every time I try and talk to him, he seems real busy. I go down there after the first of the year, and I get him this little Happy New Year's card, which is really a don't forget about me card. And he's smart enough. He's been around to know what it was. And he goes, hey, man, he goes, I don't, um, we all have problems. And, uh, but I, I know that you've been hoping we talk. And, you know, I bought this place in 86. I had the mortgage completely paid off until my wife and I split up. For the divorce, I had to remortgage the place at 11%. 2010, I was going to work the U2 tour. Bono hurt his back, canceled the tour. That was my income for the year. I made the, went off in 11, and 11, I made all my money back and 2011's money, but I couldn't keep up with the mortgage the rest of the time. He's not even at a point of eviction. The eviction, uh, the, the judgment has already, already been rent, rendered. The only thing that's left is for a judge to sign a writ of eviction. Chris bought this place when it was a ghost town in Detroit. When he went to Citigroup and said, I have all the money I owed you. Here was my work situation. They said, too late. You missed whatever it is, a six-month or a nine-month window. Sorry, we're taking your place. Because they sent appraisers down there and realized that with all the new thing, it was now worth several hundred thousand dollars more if they can kick him out than even if he paid off his entire mortgage, which a wealthy friend of his offered to do, and they still wouldn't talk to him. Oh. He tells me this, and I'm thinking, you got to let me talk to occupier homes. I don't know. We all have problems. I'm like, no. I tell my team leader, my team leader is salivating over the narrative, right? We tell local press who's salivating over the narrative. The narrative is this. A combat marine Vietnam veteran, small business owner, arts supporter, single father is about to be kicked out of the house that he has every dime he's ever owed on because Citigroup can make more money out of it. Local news loved that narrative. National news loved that narrative. ABC News New York calls the offices of the Citigroup CEO to say, why are you kicking Chris Jazik and his 11-year-old son out of their building? Citigroup did not love the freaking narrative. <laughs> <laughs> we have on Thursday scheduled a Save 1515 Broadway event that we don't even get to have. Because on Tuesday, Citigroup called Chris and said, first of all, you have a lot of friends. <laughs> and the second thing, we're going to make you a deal. Thursday becomes Celebrate 1515 Broadway. <laughs> he invites acts he's had over the years and activists that he's known over the years. And this place was just glorious, the celebration. I've never seen this guy crack a smile or show emotion, but he was almost giddy during that whole celebration night. And then he got up with his son. And for Chris and Max to stand on that stage with tears running down both of their faces, holding each other, saying, thank you, Occupy. That's why I occupy. Everyone kind of flows out afterwards. And I'm with Chris, and he says to me, you understand, I didn't know if I was going to have this place, so it didn't seem fair to schedule performances. Why don't you bring your calendar down tomorrow and get your show back up? I go walking out of that place, and I'm thinking, man, what he said before, 
it's all a matter of scale. And I'm thinking five people teams backed off multi-billion dollar financial institutions over and over again all right. across the country. Right. Let's figure out the scale of that shit. Because yeah, Occupy was this amazing wave that sort of proceeded. But there's always the next wave. And if at these points we learn that strategy, we learn how to maximize, we learn what to do the next time that numbers float us back up, it becomes that much more possible. And I walked past that park and I thought, you know, maybe I fit my gift by getting up on stage and telling my Occupy story. And even though it seems so big to try and break the grip the 1% has on the system, looking at that empty park as I drove by, I still thought, maybe. And then I drove a couple houses down and I looked up at the Fox Theater and I thought, hey. <laughs> and then I thought, fuck Charlie Sheen. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right. All right. So as I said earlier, my name is Lee Thompson, and I'm the executive director and the co-founder of the Forum Project. Back in October at Zuccotti, we began a project called Occupy the Stage. It was an effort to engage the occupiers, but also the general public in dialogue around the issues of oppression that we felt, uh, and that occupiers felt supported economic injustice. We did this utilizing theater of the oppressed techniques, which is a dialogic theater, um, theatrical techniques that involve game playing activities, the body, the voice, and invite people in to engage in the dialogue and the conversation. And even better, hopefully to have fun doing it. It's a process that transforms specta spectators, those who watch, to spectators, those who watch and also take action. And that's what we're gonna be doing for you tonight. But just as with any actor, we always begin with warm-ups. And so we're going to invite you to participate in a warm-up with us. So if we can have you all, those of you who are capable, please rise. And follow along with me. When I say stop, you're going to throw your hands up in the air like this and say stop. 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 stop, stop, stop. See, you guys are naturals. All right, great. When I say go, you're going to do this motion and say go. 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 Stop. 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 Go. Stop. Stop. Go. Stop. 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 Go. Go. When I say stop, say go. Stop. Go. Stop. Go. Stop. Go. Stop. 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 Go. 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 When I say go, say stop. Go. Stop. Go. Stop. Go. Stop. Go. Stop. Go. Stop. Go. Go. Stop. Stop. Go. Stop. Go. Stop. Go. Stop. Okay, relax. Have a seat. Okay, so a few months ago, Occupy the Stage activists, some of whom are on the stage right now with me, co connected to, uh, for a weekend retreat to de begin the process of developing se uh, scenes based on the stories of oppression that we face in our own lives. The stories that we felt supported economic injustice in the greater world, but also as they impacted us. That's the, the basis of the scenes that we're going to be seeing today. These stories are not just going to be your typical style of, of performance. They actually are posing to you a question. A question of what are the issues that Occupy is addressing? What are the issues presented to the scene? And how, um, how can you, as an individual, if you were in that situation, how could you do something different to change it for the better? So we're going to present to you two scenes this evening. And then we're going to ask you to choose one that you think resonates with you the most. 
Once that scene is chosen, we're going to be asking you, what are these issues? And even better, we're going to invite you to take part in the scene to try to change it for the better. Cool? All right. So I also want to let you know that these performers, some of them have been acting their entire lives. Some have never set foot on a stage before they got involved with Occupy the Stage. They're activists. They're here for a passion. So lots of encouragement, lots of uh, support, and give them all a hand. <laughs> And with that, we begin our first scene. Once they're settled and ready. You all good? Hang on, we're having a little um, prop issue. We're having a prop issue. Is the other scene ready? No, no. All right, we're having a prop issue. Okay, no. Uh, okay. Go small. <laughs> Okay, prop issue solved. All right, and with that, I give you the first scene called The Great Capitalist Swindle. Brunch is on me, everybody. Put it on my card. I'll have a caramel macchiato, please. Charge it. Ooh, that shirt looks good. On me, charge it. Cocktails with the ladies. Put it on my card. Why don't we go to the theater tonight? Tickets on me, everybody. Charge it. Stop. Wow. What I wouldn't give to be just like her. She's got everything all together. She's got a great job, a good education, a stable place to live. She's so independent. What I wouldn't give to be just like her. You have been. Just like her? Who are you? I am your friendly neighborhood worldwide banker. <laughs> and, and you can be just like her. You can have a beautiful hair set just like hers. You can have a beautiful dress just like hers. You can have fabulous shoes just like hers. You can have a fantastic education just like hers. You can have a place to live that is even better than hers. Well, how? How? I can get you all the money that you want, that you need. Just trust me. You'll pay it back, and you'll give me a little interest. It's nothing. And don't worry about being independent, because nobody is independent. Nobody is independent. Everybody depends on somebody. And you can depend on me. Just give me your hand. Well, what do I have to do? Oh, you just sign this little piece of paper. Oh, oh that? Don't worry about that. That's nothing. Once you're rich and famous, That'll be the last thing on your mind. Go for it. It's yeah. easy. Everybody signs. Everybody lives this way. Everybody does it. Everybody does it. Everybody does it. Ooh. Never mind. Not a problem. No, it's all signed now. See you later. Congratulations. <laughs> Enjoy. Brunch? Charge it. Oh, a Carol Macchiato, please. Put it on my car. Oh, I love that shirt. On me. Charge it. Cocktails are on me, girls. Put it on my car. Anybody want to see a show? Let's go to the theater. Charge it. Hi there. Hello. Remember me. Why, of course. Thank you so much. You changed my life. Of course I did. You look terrific. <laughs> Get my money. No, I, I I, can't pay you back yet. I don't get paid till the end of the month. I promise I'll pay you soon. You mean you've been prancing around with all my money. You have to pay it back. Right. I, I'm sorry. I just don't have it right now. The more you hold it, the more interest you have to pay. Right. So let's go. Well, what can I do? What can you do? 
Just work a little harder. Work a little harder? Work a little harder. Yes. Well, I guess I could get a second job. There you go. Now you're talking. Work your way up. Work my way up. Work my way up. Good job. Work my way up. You're doing so well. I can smell brunch just around the corner. I can do this. I can work my way out. You have my money? No. Well, let's go. The interest is building up. I, what do you expect me to do? This is all I have. That's it? Just a lousy hand and a credit card? Well, that'll be just fine for now. <gasps> Audience, what was one of the things that happened in, during this scene? Cannibalism. Cannibalism. <laughs> Very much so. What else? Credit card debt. Credit card debt. What else? Fraud. Fraud. Great. What else? Seduction. Seduction. Selling your soul for capitalism. Selling your soul for capitalism. What else? Take, taking advantage of naive. Take, taking people. advantage of naive people. Yeah. Exploitation. Exploitation. Yep. Admiring the wrong kind of person. Admiring the wrong kind of person, being lured into it by this idea. Yeah. Bad bandwagon fallacy. Bandwagon fallacy, yeah. Conspicuous consumption. Conspicuous consumption. Everybody recognize these things? Yeah. Do people think of things that they could possibly just think not if you do think of things that you could possibly do if you were the consumer in the situation? Would you do something differently? Yes, maybe? Stolen. <laughs> okay, so we'll get to that in a moment, and we're going we're gonna to go on to our next scene. This is Unsilencing Racism. Right. Hello, and welcome to today's seminar, Building Wealth in America. Today, we will be going over how to secure a loan to get a new home and achieve the true American dream. Now, this is not an easy process, but those who work hard will be rewarded. Let's get started. Hello, and what is your name? My name is Emily. Emily. Great. <laughs> E-M-I-L-Y. Of course. There you go. Thank you. Next. Hi, welcome. What's your name? Maria Christina. Small name tag. I'm just going to write Christina. That would fit. C H R I S T I N A. There you go. That would fit. Right, let's get started. Oh, oh I'm sorry, I'm late. Yes, you are. Let's see. What's your name? Uh, Jen Bora. Jen. J E O N. Oh, it's, it's, it's with an I. It's, it's Korean. Okay, why don't you write it yourself? There you go. Have a seat. So, I'm sure as many of you know, thank you so As many of you know, there are three primary indicators to building financial independence in this great country of ours. We have education, employment, and home ownership. Remember, the eligibility here of securing a loan to get your home will depend on how hard you've worked, and really, if you can show us that you deserve a home. Let's get started with part one, race. Tell us a little bit about your race. Check one box. Well, I'm white, but I don't really see color. Great. <laughs> Where are you from? I was born in Manhattan, but my family's from Mexico. Are you legal? I was born here. Oh, okay. We'll go ahead and check a box. Um, but Hispanic isn't an option on this form. Oh, that's okay. You can just put white. <laughs> and you? Yes, uh, well, I'm Korean-American. My family came here when I was nine. Oh, so you probably check Asian. Or Oriental. I always get those two confused. <laughs> All right, moving on. Education. We want to hear a little bit about your educational history. Oh, you know, did you go to St. Academy Prep? Yes, I thought I recognized you. You 